Hey, come on. Hey, I'm moving at your out, command, darling. Pray you don't ask for anything foolish. Someone there?
the old summer home. It's just as tacky as I remember it. Who cares? The terminal for the code's on the wall there. My number's 47. All right. I'll enter the full code now. What is it you think we'll find, anyway? I don't know. Gold, jewels, baseball cards. Could be anything. The old man was secretive. We must have had different fathers. The one I remember would go out of his way to tell you about his exploits. Only when he was drunk. That should do it. Shall we? There's no guarantee the five of you work together, and as such, further proof is needed. You can't be serious. As you'll note, there are five rooms in this house, each with a self-contained test designed specifically for the five of you. Pass them all, and you unlock the main safe. Except there's only two of us here. Don't bother. It's a recording. It's a miracle this piece of scrap even functions after no all this way time. To pick this. Now go forth, sirs and madams, and reap the rewards that can only come from working together. So, the entire house is a safe. I assume cracking our puzzles will be easy. The rest will take some ingenuity. We'll have to act like our siblings. Or, even worse, think like them. I'll leave that to you and your friend. You were always mocking everyone's mannerisms. Perhaps that might pay off here. Well, I assume the kitchen will be Barnaby's. He was a fine chef. God only knows why he chose to have his servants cook for him instead. Arthur's test will likely be the stage room. He always enjoyed a good play. Antoinette's, I assume, will be in her bedroom. Something violent, I presume. Mine likely involves some sort of robotics or science experiment, so I'll head over to the lab. We can meet up when we're done. Please proceed to the next phase. Sensor alert. Anomaly detected. Area not secure. Repeat. Area not secure. What Negative is sensor it? read. Weapons cold. That would be squirrel stew. It's a joke, really. Barnaby called father a squirrely man and cooked it for him without ever telling him the contents. I never really knew if father liked the stew or not, or if he knew what Barnaby was up to. I suppose in the end he didn't care. He just wanted to spend time with his son. But enough sentiment. The recipe should be here somewhere. Some ingredients might no longer exist as well as some measurements, so we can't be sure the wasteland recipe is the same. The original recipe might have included tomatoes and potatoes. A hybrid of that would work, but half a potato and half a tomato aren't one of either. Please proceed to the next phase.
No, that doesn't seem to be right. Hopefully the Mr. Handy hasn't noticed we made the wrong stew. If I'm not mistaken, I think one cup is eight ounces. There's 16 ounces in every bottle of water. Please proceed to the, the next phase. The original recipe might have included tomatoes and potatoes. Congratulations, Barnaby. You passed your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. Arthur's test. The show starts when you step on the stage. Please proceed to the next phase. All right. So, what will this test be? I'd assume it'd be the Bard, or something from that time period. For this test, you will need to perform the play, The Silver Shroud. Of course. It would have to be a comic book. Arthur memorized them all because he knew it would bother me to no end. Unfortunately, I'll need you to read the lines, darling. I couldn't possibly do it justice. Don't worry. If you get stuck, just spout out the most incomprehensible nonsense you can think of and you'll be fine. Please proceed to the next phase. Is something the matter? What do you want, stranger? Can't you say I'm busy selling drugs to kids? Peddling poison to kids, are we? You have taken your last life, villain. I don't think so. I can poison as many children as I want and no one can stop me. Because in Boston, the mob owns the police. Your crimes have gone unpunished for too long, but today you face the Silver Shroud! Ah, the Dark Dick himself. I thought you'd be taller. And if you think someone as short as yourself can stop me, then you're as foolish as the human who designed that getup. It is not wise to stand between the Silver Shroud and righteous. Justice! Ah, but there's another thing standing between you and justice. This helpless child, Timmy. And if you want to punish me, you'll have to kill him to do it. For I've taken him hostage. You shield yourself behind an innocent. You are craven. And you shall fall before me. We'll see about that. I am the instrument of justice, and I cannot fall. Death has come for you, evildoer, and I am its shroud! Congratulations, Arthur. You've passed your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. It looks like that did the trick. And just in the nick of time. Any longer and I would have shot you myself. Something you need, darling. What is it, my dear? 
Please proceed to the next phase. Antoinette had anger issues. She reminds me of a feral ghoul. Or rather, ghouls remind me of her. If you're ready to start the test, press the button on the wall there. Your Geiger counter seems to have lost its mind, which means we have to work quickly. We'll have to think like my sister. Destroy everything in the room. See if that stops it. I try to be careful. Congratulations, Antoinette. You have your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. See how Margaret's doing. I can't pick this. Please proceed to the next phase. Well, I hope these ladies didn't cause you too much trouble. They're not ladies. They're machines. And I'm sure disabling them was as simple as pressing 300 buttons. At least that much. Not that you'd understand anyway. Regardless, it looks like all that's left is your room. I can't wait to see what horrors await inside. Don't worry, Margaret. I doubt it's anything I haven't shown you already. Not that you are paying attention. Let's go. This place isn't easy on the eye.
What's this? A room with a holotape? I just had to disable three Assaultrons before they ripped me to shreds, and this is all that's waiting for you? Congratulations, Audrey. You've passed your portion of the test. The door to the safe is open. I suppose that's that, then. Should we listen to the hollow tape? Let's just go. Anything made for you, I have no interest in exposing myself to. For the past 40 years, I have watched my five children do nothing but squabble and fight. Yet, perhaps the fault is mine for failing to teach them the value of family. However, even now, as I lay sick and dying, I feel it is not too late for them and for me. Over the past decade, while seeking to prolong my life, I have discovered something far more valuable than wealth and fortune. Yet despite all its promises, I will not cannot give this gift to my children, not as they are now. Audrey, you've always had a gift with words, so this is your test. Make peace with your siblings, and help them make peace with each other. Watch over them through good times and bad, for this is only the first step in a long and arduous journey. But if you make that journey together, I believe the five of you can strip immortality of its curse. Apart, you will find it a fate worse than death. Sir, the doctors are ready. In a minute. <coughs> I guess it's time. So, would you like to do the honors? You've got to be kidding me. All this work for a single vial? Let's not jump to conclusions. Father was nothing if not a predictable man. This vial is a special serum developed by a friend of your father's. Contained inside are the secrets of immortality itself. Immortality? <laughs> well, this is a fine joke. You don't say. I suspected the prize was worthless, but it's even worse than that. It's ironic. I am sorry to interrupt your joyous celebration, but I must inform you that I have now fulfilled my duties as guardian of your father's estate. Good luck to all of you. Well, I suppose it's not a total loss. I'll take that vial, thank you very much. Really, Margaret? It's a serum that grants you immortality. It might as well be a state-of-the-art television for all the good it'll do. It may not be worth anything to us, but it's worth something to somebody. Which makes it a valuable commodity all the same. Ah, so you did more than disable those Assaultrons. You reprogrammed them. There really was no need. If I wanted to kill you, Margaret, I assure you, my friend over here could. You're all talk, you know that? It's funny. Arthur said you were street smart, that you were the one person who couldn't be swayed by sentiment. And in the end, you just gave me your half of the combination. You'll find I've given you much, much more. That is, if you ever bother to look. Huh. Goodbye, sister. Don't spend it all in one century. Something you need, darling. Hey, drink this. You look a little parched. <clears throat> well, that ends that. I appreciate the restraint you showed. Margaret may not have had a high opinion of me, but in time she may realize what she really gained from all this. What happened between you two? Well, a better question would be, what happened between you five? 
The five of us played each sibling against the other, like a game. In the end, we forgot who hated whom and why. Regardless, I'd say poor Margaret left the real prize behind. It's a lesson I learned in D.C. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. In fact, given your knack for pacifism, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Of course, traveling with you is never dull. And more than murder and theft, being dull is quite possibly the worst crime I can imagine. So I'm pleased to hear my case won't be going to trial. But enough with the hugs and kisses. You have work to do, right? Then let's do it. <laughs>